from DJ Sokol Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. It is Big East Women's Basketball here on BEDN, presented by SoFi as the DePaul Blue Demons face the Creighton Blue Jays in an early conference showdown. With John Schreiner, I'm Donnie Barnes. One thing these two teams have in common is they're both off to excellent starts this season. Everything else about how they've gone about getting here, though, John, is extremely different. Yeah, basically polar opposites, right? I mean, DePaul loves to get up and down the floor, averaging almost 88 points a game. They feast on opponent turnovers. The Blue Jays have done it a little differently. They're holding teams under 60 points per game, and they don't turn it over. They're number three in the country in fewest turnovers. Yeah, it's an interesting clash between two key players today as well. For the DePaul Blue Demons, Shantae Stonewall is averaging over 17 points a game. Yeah, Stonewall, great inside-out game. She's going to be tough to guard. She's long. She's athletic. Fourth in the conference in points per game, first in steals per game. She plays at both ends of the floor. Meanwhile, Creighton knew they were going to have to have Jalen Agnew step up in a big way this year. She's been even bigger than anyone expected. Yeah, early in the season, Jalen Agnew had a bad game against Drake. She was 1 for 12 shooting, and since then, more than 12 points in every contest. And by the way, in the three conference games this year, she's averaging 27. She's been on fire. Which of these two teams will impose their will and their style on this game? We'll start to find out next when we tip it off from Sokol after this. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Sunday afternoon, Creighton and DePaul. DePaul off to a 2-0 start in conference play, 12-2 overall as we look at their starting five, John. Deja Church, Lexi Ho, Sonia Morris, Kelly Campbell, and Shante Stonewall. We highlighted Stonewall in our open, but this is such a deep and balanced team. You go up and down their lineup, almost everybody averages in double figures, and they're able to light up the scoreboard at any time. Well, and Kelly Campbell is a threat for a triple-double at almost any time. She is the leading rebounder from the point guard spot for this team. It's rare, but she is a do-it-all player. She'll be another one to watch for the Blue Demons. For the Creighton Blue Jays, as John mentioned in the open, they've gone about things very differently, using defense and grit. And we talked about Jalen Agnew already. Olivia Elger, though, back in the lineup today, she's such a key player for them. Yeah, Elger can do so much off the dribble. She just creates space on the floor for those other players to get open. And no Tatum Rembao today, that's mm -hmm. a big absence for the Blue Jays. Look at our head coaches today. Both of them very experienced and successful in their careers at their respective schools. Jim Flannery in his 18th season as he has seen his team really overachieve this year, I think, compared to what a lot of people expected. With as shorthanded as they've been, the number of injuries they've had, he's been excellent again. Meanwhile, Doug Bruno, the dean of head coaches in Big East women's basketball, season 34 for him, a titan in this field. Well, 706 and 344 his record as the head man for the Blue Demons. 17 straight NCAA tournaments. It doesn't get much better. And two highlighted players before the game will jump at center. Stonewall against Agnew. We'll be saying that a lot today, and it's controlled by the Blue Jays. And that, the White. That is the matchup to watch. Shante Stonewall's going to guard Jalen Agnew. And already with the active hands denying the pass into the corner. DePaul liked to blitz you right from the start. They have a plus 81 point differential in the first quarter this year. DePaul have beaten Creighton 11 of the last 12 meetings. Early three is good. Great 
Rachel Saunders, and a good start for Creighton. Saunders, just a 28% three-point shooter coming in, but knocks down an early one right there. That could be important. Stonewall with the strong move in the post, but couldn't quite finish. Well defended by Greg Leone. Well, that's going to be a tough assignment for Greg Leone. Stonewall's really quick. Greg Leone's going to have to do that, pick up every missed shot. Another open three. Won't go down for Timmy Sarda. Averaging 11 points a game. Down the lane, left-handed lay-in by Lexi Held, averaging 14 a game coming in. And this is what DePaul does. They, they press off the made basket. This is how they create so many turnovers. Averaging over 24 turnovers forced a game. They've had 25 or more seven times this year. They're sixth in the country in turnovers forced. And Gracie Greg Leone connects. A couple of early threes have the Jays up by four initially, but now back to one as Lexi Held. She has five already. Uh, this is what DePaul can do. They just play faster than you. They get up and down the floor and beat you to where you need to be. Another three ball, way short. Fought for under the rim. And a timeout taken by Creighton. That was Rachel Saunders fighting for that loose ball and calling for time. Look at the series history between these two teams. DePaul 5-2 in Omaha. It's DePaul who lead 13-3. Uh, so we're going to take a... Not going to have a media timeout here, so we'll keep things here. Well, DePaul had beaten Creighton nine times in a row until Creighton went to Chicago and beat them last season and DePaul came here and won and they knocked Creighton out of the Big East tournament so DePaul back on that winning streak over the Blue Jays once again already as they've won the last two meetings. We will have a break here we're told this has turned into a media timeout 6-5 Creighton early on at Sokol. <laughs> My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now.
rejoining in action. Jalen Agnew canned a three for Creighton a moment ago. And now she drives right in and scores again, this time with the lay-in. And when she gets going, you better watch out. The Paul's going to have to do something to slow her down. Five in a row for Agnew and the Blue Jays. Shante Stonewall answers right back for DePaul. Stonewall doesn't get to the free throw line a ton. Just 32 free throws on the season. She does it mostly without creating contact. She's been good when she's gotten to the free throw line, 78% on the season. She completes the three-point play and then nearly steals the inbound. She's so long and that leaping ability with those long arms. She's built almost exactly like Jalen Agnew. And she's so active in that press. It's a tough spot to inbound from, but a foul called on DePaul as that press got a little over-aggressive. Yeah, Elger was setting a screen for Jalen Agnew to get open, and Stonewall tried to run right through it. She got called for the push. Bounded to Agnew. Breaks the rest of that trap pretty easily. Almost traveled. Paul Bench thought she did. And then the steal and the foul on Temi Sarda. And Sonia Morris, that left hip, hit the court really hard when she was tripped up by Sarda. Take another look. Look at that. Ouch. That's a tough one. Sonia Morris, you know, we talk about Shante Stonewall averaging over 17 a game. Sonia Morris right at 17 a game as well, shooting almost 50% from the floor. A very key member of this DePaul squad. That hurts. Yeah. Every sport has its own unique toll that it can take on your body. The pounding that hardwood can put in your joints in basketball can be pretty brutal, especially when you hit it hard like that. DePaul within three. Deja Church wanted the ball in the post. And an air ball. Uh, was that deflected? I think it's going to stay DePaul basketball. Much to the consternation of the crowd. Lexi held way short on the three, but apparently glanced off a Creighton hand last. Yeah, she just tried to rise and shoot over Agnew and left it way short. Stonewall. Too strong off the glass. And foul against DePaul. It'll be Creighton basketball. Team foul on DePaul. You see both teams with two. And it was Bakelja whistled for the push. And then a touch foul on Deja Church, who transferred in from Michigan earlier this year. She started all 34 games for the Wolverines last season. Picked up a cheap foul there. DePaul already with three team fouls. We still got six and a half minutes to go here in the first. Pass is held almost forced to turnover. Talk about all the turnovers to Paul Force. Creighton have been one of the best in the country at not turning it over, averaging just over 10 a game. Late shot clock three off the mark from Chloe Dwarak, but Creighton get it back and can recycle the basketball. It's just so impressive to watch the Paul Blake defense. Their, their hands are so active, they're in every passing lane. Agnew short. On that three, DePaul could tie it with a tray of their own. And a step in two instead from Deja Church. Stonewall the board, but it's stripped and stolen by Agnew. Now we're playing at Creighton's pace right now. Creighton want to keep this game in the 60s. 
Yeah, DePaul those, would love nothing more to get into the 80s. You're right. Those first few possessions were up and down. That's how DePaul want to play. Creighton have settled into their half court much more since then. Sarda hangs and scores. Nicely finished. That's what the Blue Jays need to do. They're going to look for shots late in the shot clock, clear out for somebody to make a play. Offensive board, touch back to Church, who misses way short. Stonewall trying to save it, but only to Rachel Saunders. Creighton, will they push the pace here? Well, they tried, but maybe an ill-advised pass picked off. And an easy two for Shante Stonewall. That is classic to Paul. They make a bad pass, they throw it the other way. They've got somebody waiting to score. Carly Batchelor has seen some big minutes in her freshman season, important minutes. Jays have been racked by injuries. There's another three. Rachel Saunders feeling it early on. She's two for two from beyond the arc. Yeah, Rachel Saunders had made just five three-pointers coming in. She's made two already in the first quarter. Largest lead for the Jays. Ball back off another miss from Lexi Held. Paul shooting just 33% from the floor right now. They're normally almost 45%. The shooting woes continue, and Creighton can keep this game slowed down. That's the recipe for victory for the team from Omaha. Mitchell Saunders checks out. Peyton Bronski comes in for Creighton. Papillion native here in the Omaha area. Jalen Agnew going to get a little bit of a rest as well. A little adjustment in midair there by Eva Kelja. Scoring off the bench for DePaul this year, but another empty trip for the Blue Demons. Now Sonia Morris back out there after taking that nasty spill on her left hip. We'll keep an eye on her and see if it's limiting her in any way. Elger thought about the three. Back with Dorak. Stepping into the lane, trying to dish it to the corner. And the Jays get bailed out by a late foul on Kelly Campbell. The shot clock was down to three. I'm not sure they would have gotten a shot off at all. But that, this is a smart play by Elger. She just dips a shoulder and makes it look like she's trying to get to a spot and she's being blocked off. I think she ran straight into Campbell and drew the foul. So the call are out of fouls the rest of this quarter. Miss short by Dwarak and DePaul hanging within six. Slipped under the hoop and rolled home by Kiara Dolman. Kiara, that is, Dolman transferred in from Iowa Western. As Stonewall nearly forces another steal off the inbound. Dolman played just across the river from here at Iowa Western last year, led them to a region championship in the JUCO ranks. Four-point lead for Creighton. Again, tipped out of bounds, this time by Morris. Uh, active hands. They, they're so good at the press off the made basket. <laughs> Three in a row, tipped out of bounds by DePaul. It's got to be infuriating to oh, play against. Can't imagine. Can't execute the simple thing against them. And finally, they come up with the steal. It was Campbell who did so. And it leads to an open three-point look that goes down flawlessly from Dahlman. She has five straight. DePaul are within one. This is what they do, DePaul. You might get ahead of them, but they're not going to let you get comfortable. You might score some points. Can't rest on your laurels against this team. Elcher can't provide the answer. And DePaul will have a chance to take the lead. Jalen Agnew comes back on for the Jays. A 
along the baseline. Tough look for Dee Bakelja. Tipped around and claimed by Agnew. And a long three by Agnew. Wouldn't go down. The ball another chance to take the lead. Morris at pace, pulls up. Left it way short. The Paul play at just a frenetic pace. I mean, everything they do is high intensity. And you see Creighton trying to play very measured, want to set the offense, run lots of action. DePaul just gets into the offense, looks for the first good shot, and they take it. Knocked free and stolen. And a two-on-one as the Blue Demons miss a layup and miss another. Well, Sonia Morris would like those back. Uh, they're normally so good in those breakout opportunities. They get so many. You don't see them miss that very often. And a drive and pull up by Temi Sarda. She uses the glass. So to Paul, it looked like they were going to take a lead a moment ago. Back down by three. Final minute of quarter one. And Stonewall off the beautiful dish from Kelly Campbell. Makes it a one point game again. Shot clock is off. Jays can hold for the final shot of the frame. Warak milking clock. Being swatted at by Bekelja. Saunders takes the three. Air ball. And time expires in the first quarter. Very competitive opening 10 minutes as we thought it would be. Teams going back and forth, not just in terms of Creighton's margin of lead, but also in terms of pace. Another entertaining 10 minutes coming your way next. 18-17 Creighton after one at Sokol Arena. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. Finals around the Big East Women's Basketball Conference scoreboard on Friday. St. John's over Georgetown. 
We saw Creighton defeating Marquette. We had that here on BEDN. Villanova over Seton Hall. DePaul handled Providence. So these two teams here today, DePaul and Creighton, two of only three remaining unbeaten teams in Big East play, even though we're very early. As the Blue Demons seeking the lead and can't find it just yet. And then they commit the foul. Deja Church, that's going to be her second. And both of them have been rather cheap. And she had the touch foul coming across the timeline and then won about 93 and a half feet from the basket. She's going to have to go sit down, maybe for the rest of the half. And Doug Bruno says, no, nope, stay here for a second. We've got some things we need to talk about. I think his point was, you know, they're 94 feet from the basket. You don't need to get up in her shorts like that. We're, we're pressing off the made basket, but it's a defensive rebound. Kind of unnecessary from Church. Creighton shot 44% in the first half. Much better than their season average, but they turn it over here. Agnew trying to find Olivia Elger under the rim. That's uh, kind of a bad sign, Donnie. It's already five turnovers for the Blue Jays. That's half the average for an entire game, and we've just started the second quarter. You can't let DePaul force you into too many turnovers if you're going in. That's what they're so good at. Dolman, and the crowd thought that she took steps, but she puts DePaul in front. Now they want the elbow call. She made contact. Her shoulder went right into the chest of Carly Batchelor. Elger finds a cutter. And that's Carly Batchelor who was fouled, and she'll shoot free throws. We've got two team fouls already early in this one for DePaul. They were able to avoid the bonus after getting four team fouls early in the first quarter. Carly Batchelor has now attempted 14 free throws this year and only made six of them. But again, she's played a key role off the bench. Chipped in some big baskets, and she ties the game at 19. Immediately goes to the bench, replaced by Peyton Brodsky. I think Brodsky's a player that Creighton needs some contribution from, Donnie. She's not scored 0 for 16 in her last four games. They're going to come out on top today. Brodsky's got to contribute something in the scoring column. Campbell wants Stonewall in the post and finds her, and Stonewall hits the fadeaway over. Jalen Agnew. So good. Just smooth. There's the slip pass from Sarda to Agnew and count it plus one. And the Jays patient in the half court. And then Agnew surprised the defense, and Sarda hit her in stride. And a second straight defensive possession with a foul on Dahlman for the Blue Demons, and that is just a great back cut by Jalen Agnew and a good pass from Sarda. Now the three-point play completed by Jalen Agnew, who restores Creighton's lead. now with eight points. She's gone over 30 twice this year. Got a mismatch right there. Stonewall on Saunders. Stonewall trying to capitalize, draws a foul. She hit the floor rather hard. Her teammate's concerned. Looks like she's OK. Stonewall's all of 6-1. Rachel Saunders just 5-9. It's a big mismatch. They can get that switched on and went right to it. Stonewall's going to have two chances from the line. And you mentioned a 77% free throw shooter. She misses the first. Last year, she scored in double figures 24 times. And misses them both, but the rebound by Sonia Morris, and then she misses. And the Jays dodge one there. Did not box out well, but... Didn't cost them this time. Yeah. 
Sarda. Kicking out for an open three. Brodsky off the mark. 0 for 9, last five games for Brodsky from outside. And the block by Agnew. She stuffs Morris. Agnew averages almost a block a game on the defensive end as well. And presses into the double and scores again. Something else, Jalen Agnew. She has 10. Back cut, reverse layup won't go for Jolene Danninger. And Agnew continues at her career scoring pace, which is 14 and a half a game. She's well above that this season. She would be very close to climbing into the top 10 all-time scoring for the Blue Jays. And Agnew wants more. Not this time. Stonewall fading away. She'll shoot free throws. It's tough. DePaul doing a good job of getting Stonewall switched on to defenders that she has either a speed or a height advantage against. And right there, Brodsky just a little slow to react. Got her on the arm. Bounces that one in after missing a couple a moment ago. Jim Flannery always looks concerned at best <laughs> in front of the Creighton bench. Doesn't matter if they're down 20 or up 40. Agitated would be a good description of his general demeanor. That's during games. Very personable and great to talk to before and after. One point Creighton advantage. And Brodsky stripped of the ball. Great save as Campbell kept it in play. And it leads to Bekelja being swatted at the other end by Agnew. And that brings some of this crowd to their feet. Jalen Agnew doing everything for the Jays to keep them in this one in the first half. Look at the athletic play right there. Doesn't commit the foul, able to get a fingertip to it, swatted out of bounds, prevent the run out bucket. He held Hit a couple early buckets and fades away and gives DePaul a one-point lead. Yeah, breaks a two-minute and 43-second streak without a field goal for DePaul. It gone 0 for 4 in that stretch. Well, a couple times DePaul have taken brief leads in this game. Creighton have answered right back. Can't dig yourself a hole against this DePaul team. They're too good. Brodsky knocked out of her hands, got it back. They have to force up a shot here. And it's forced short by Rachel Saunders. Paul's largest lead has been two. And Stonewall makes it three. Everything they do is at pace. I mean, Bringing the ball out of the backcourt with no pressure. They're almost on a dead sprint to the timeline. 13 points for Shante Stonewall. Sarda. All the way to the lane and all the way to the bucket. Big answer for Creighton. Crowd screaming for a travel. And instead it's a layup for Kelly Campbell. Dwarak trying to force it out toward the three-point line. And DePaul have it. Campbell looked like she was trying to call for time for a moment. But they keep it in play. And then a whistle. And a travel. Frantic sequence. DePaul don't mind that generally. And a timeout on the floor. 4-12 until halftime. DePaul have gone in front here in the second quarter.
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. second quarter we talked about their defense and how they love to force turnovers force 20 or more in all 14 of their games this season even against number one ranked UConn they forced 21 in a 10 point loss just an incredibly pesky and infuriating defensive team to play against just run I mean you have to be so physically conditioned to play this kind of defense they just run around all over the place. Very impressive. Agnew facing up Stonewall. Kicking out to Dee Dee Pryor, who then floats and scores from the elbow. Dee Dee Pryor just in the game. She scored over 1,000 points in high school. A freshman from Urbandale, Iowa. She hadn't scored in the last three games she played in. And Pryor called for a foul at the other end. Free throws for Deja Church. She's back in the game after picking up two early fouls herself. And Deja Church transferred in from Michigan, and as we said earlier, and a lot of times when you see somebody transfer in from a program like that, you think, well, she must not have gotten to play much. No, That's she started case. all 34 games last year. Not only that, she was their second leading scorer. She was recruited by Stanford, among others. Out of high school. It's one of two here. And it went off of Agnew's hand last, says the referee on the, the baseline there. And I believe it did. And Flannery doesn't think so. So two-point lead for DePaul, and they get the ball back. Stonewall already with 13, make it 15. She can finish in so many oh, ways. She's feeling it today too, Donnie. I don't. She's not going to miss too many this afternoon here at DJ Soak Arena, it doesn't look like. She's six of nine from the floor. Sarda, she draws contact, and she'll go to the line. And the ball are out of fouls the rest of the half. Emmy Sarda, whose game day superstition is eating sour Skittles. Hmm. There's points in those, I hear. Marshawn Lynch would agree. That's right. <laughs> Although I'm not, a few, not sure if he's on the sour. He might just be taste the rainbow. 11 points, five rebounds a game for Sarda. Had an excellent season so far and splashes them both. Creighton back within two. Sarda's starting to get it going a little bit. 
Now with eight points, she's had 12 points or more in three straight games. Her scoring clip has picked up since we've started conference play. Agnew stealing that pass attempt from Lexi Hill. Creighton could tie or take the lead again. Agnew right away. She'll do that sometimes. It's great when you make them. Didn't go in that time. Deflected entry pass from Campbell, who gets it right back. Misses badly. And Elger could push it for Creighton. Three on two. And Pryor took too many steps. And that's unfortunate from Creighton's standpoint, because as you saw, she nailed the ensuing shot. Against a team like DePaul, if you can break that press, you should figure to have some runouts. But they've been very good at getting back when Creighton's broken the press. And that was really the first sort of advantage breakout that Creighton's had today. Stonewall off the mark and then over the back foul on Morris. That's her first. And DePaul over the limit. Public address announcer, I think, uh, announced a timeout, but I don't think that's happening. It's free throws for Temi Sorry. Just made two a moment ago, makes this one as well. Could tie it with another. Sarda has 10. And it's 32 each late in the first half. It's a partisan crowd at Sokol trying to help the referees every time DePaul has the ball. As that ball hustled down and somehow saved by Sonia Morris. What a play. Keeps this possession alive for the Blue Demons. And then Stonewall goes to work and scores plus one. Boy, those kind of sequences can swing a game. Uh, she's such a tough matchup. I mean, you've got the freshman Carly Batchelor doing everything she can. But Stonewall's just so crafty down on the block. Turns baseline, gets Batchelor's hands in the wrong spot, makes the shot, and now converts the three-point play. Jim Flannery was really irate because he felt his team should have had that long rebound. Paul win the hustle points. There's no doubt about that. Doug Bruno won't settle for anybody on the floor that's not out there to run. Jay's trying to answer back. The three ball short from Bachelor. Paul trying to push this lead out before halftime. Open three off the back iron from Sonia Morris. And then a foul called on Creighton. I think they call that on Agnew. Yeah, she was trying to box out Stonewall. Got a little too aggressive. And I think it probably could have gone either way, honestly, here, Donnie. Stonewall gets an arm up in the air. Agnew kind of hooks it on her way to the floor. Weird sequence right there. It's Agnew's first. Stonewall rattles that in. 18 points, make it 19 now for Shante Stonewall. She could get to 20 before half. She does, and a game high five point lead for the Blue Demons. And her season high was 27 against Miami of Florida. She's working on that here today. Sarda provides another answer for Creighton. She's been huge in this half. She now has 12. She's so good at using her body to create space on the drive. Stonewall way off, but gathered by Lexi Held. Another open three. That goes down for Dee Bekelja. Former Gatorade Ohio Girls Basketball Player of the Year in high school. 
They just keep rolling them into this program year after year. Just back up the truck. And a game high six point lead for DePaul. You see a four second differential between game and shot clock. Just trying to take as much of it as possible. Sardis scored their last six. D.D. Pryor steps in and connects. Final possession of the half, tipped out of bounds with a second and a half remaining. And that's, that's not a great break for Creighton either because it allows DePaul to advance the ball and set something up off the inbound now. They were going to have to cast one up off that catch and shoot opportunity. Now they're going to be able to set a play and run something. And they bring Michael Parham in for the first time today to defend this inbound with her size and length. She's 6'2". Inbounded to Stonewall, who's swatted by Agnew at the buzzer. And that's how the first half ends. We knew it was going to be competitive. It was an outstanding opening 20 minutes of basketball. At times it was frantic. At times it was chaotic. DePaul don't mind that. Creighton hung in. 40 to 36 Blue Demons at the half. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com. It is halftime in Omaha, and the basketball world lost an absolute titan this week. NBA Commissioner Emeritus David Stern passed away at the age of 77 on Wednesday. During Stern's legendary run as commissioner of the NBA, he helped found the WNBA with Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman, who served as the league's first president. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. 
continue at halftime here in Omaha. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. And on this week's episode, Megan was joined by reigning player of the week, Jalen Agnew from Creighton. Now, welcome into Big East Fast Break Creighton Senior Forward and the Big East Player of the Week, Jalen Agnew. Jalen, your team is off to a 2-0 start in Big East play, and you won both of those games on the road. How crucial is it to get road victories right at the start of conference play? Yeah, it's very crucial. Um, you know, this season in the Big East is going to be very competitive, and so we knew we had to start out strong, and so getting those two road victories were a good stepping stone um, for hopefully the rest of the season. In your most recent game, in your win over Villanova, you scored 31 points. That's the second time this season that you've had a game where you scored at least 30 or more points. When you get into such an offensive rhythm, how would you describe that? Um, I don't know. It's um, You kind of can't tell at first, then, then all your teammates are hyping you up, and you're like, all right, well, I guess I should just keep going. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's just it's, um, really cool. and. Um, like I said, my teammates always hype me up, and so it's um, it's fun like hearing from them um, that you're doing well, and so um, yeah, so it's been it's been fun. How were your teammates able to hype you up in your game against Georgetown, where you didn't score the bulk of your points until the second half, where you had 20 of your 23 points? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, they told me to stay aggressive, them and the coaches. Um, you know, especially from the coaching staff, they're like, you know, sometimes we need you to be the one to start our offense, get our offense going, and so. Um, just to be use that in kind of like an unselfish way and like to when I start to get going that hopefully everyone else has to get going as well. I remember talking to your head coach Jim Flannery back at Big East Media Day and he was saying one of his hopes for you this season is to just have fun. Mm -hmm. We're two games into the conference season but you've had a lot of basketball that you've played so mm -hmm. long. How much fun are you having? A lot of fun. This is a super fun group. Um, actually we we started this new thing this year um, and so I don't know if you know about the Chicago Bears and how they have their club dub um, thing after they win. And we kind of started doing our own version of that. And so after every win, we um, we have like lights and we turn we turn the lights off and we have our own like strobe lights type thing. And we play music and we like dance after every win. So that's kind of been super fun to just enjoy every win, especially like we've had a couple ugly ones, like Flan has said. And so just to, you know, wins are hard to come by. And so to get those wins and just enjoy it and keep that going. Whose idea was it to start that? Um, actually, Olivia Elgers, because she's from Chicago, and so she um, she knew all about that, and so she's like, I think it'd be a super fun thing um, to do. So she took it to the coaches, and they thought it was awesome, and so we've been doing that so far, and it's been super fun. Jalen, you're one of three seniors on the team this season. You also lead your team in scoring. How would you describe your leadership and your ability to really, when all of your teammates are relying on you? Yeah, um, I our coaches talk about or talk to me about being more of a vocal leader um and i i'm not so great at that i like to lead more by action kind of and so um i think that's where um i've done better at it would be the um action and um kind of you know the, like olivia is great at the vocal leading and, and so is temi and so um they kind of take that side of it and i um i'm more of like the leading by action type thing um, and so that's kind of where I kind of start, um, start in my leadership, I would say. I love that, Jalen. Thank you very much for joining me and good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. Now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Back at Sokol Arena, 40 to 36 to Paul, leading Creighton at halftime here on BEDN, presented by SoFi. Back here courtside, I'm Donnie Barnes. He's John Schreiner. 
Creighton have hung in pretty well in that first half. Stayed within four points, obviously. And I think, John, they did a lot of what they wanted to do, except maybe stop Shantae Stonewall, who takes some stopping. She had 20 points. <laughs> yeah, on pace for 40 for the game. That's not where you want her to be. And I think Jalen Agnew was doing a nice job defensively, again, defensively against her early. But DePaul just created some situations through some screen and movement where they got her switched onto defenders that really couldn't stay with her. And Stonewall absolutely took advantage of that. Definitely big credit to Doug Bruno and his staff for creating those mismatches and Stonewall for finishing all of her opportunities that she has. Let's look at some of those first half highlights. A lot of them will involve Shantae Stonewall, of course. But the Jays got it going early and they had some shots from beyond the arc to jump out to an early lead. Yeah, Rachel Saunders for a couple and Gracie Griglione for a three right there. Three early threes that looked like we were going to rain down some buckets from the outside here at DJ Sokol. Both teams cooled shooting from the outside, but that defensive pressure for DePaul every bit as advertised. Yeah, they average over 20 turnovers forced a game. They forced eight from Creighton in that opening half, and that led to some easy buckets for the Blue Demons. It's easy to say you can't turn it over against DePaul. It's a lot harder to do with the pressure that they put on you at all times. Yeah, sometimes you have to turn it over against DePaul because it's the only option they give you. And there's Stonewall. I mean, she's shown you just about everything in the bag of tricks so far. The baseline turn, turning back inside to the lane, shooting over top, drawing fouls. Jalen Agnew helped keep Creighton close in that second quarter as she was in double figures with 10. And she's gone over 30 twice this year. They might need her to do that in the second half if they're going to pull this game out. And DePaul, who had trailed most of the first quarter and early in the second, they pulled to a lead midway through the second quarter and held it until the end of half number one. Some first half statistics for you with this 40 to 36 game. Field goal percentage, Creighton shooting well above their season average. They're averaging about 37%, so they shot it well. And again, they're going to have to, easier said than done, avoid turnovers. To Paul, meanwhile, look at that, only three turnovers themselves in half number one. Uh, and, the, you know, they're near the top of the country in assist to turnover ratio for a reason. I mean, 13 assists to three turnovers. That's what they do game in and game out. Creighton is also near the top of the list in the country in that category also, but they haven't played DePaul every time out. And DePaul, as we've seen, pressing off the made baskets and the active hands at the defensive end have created those turnovers. When we come back, it'll be time for half number two. One of these two teams is going to stay unbeaten in Big East play this year. We'll see who next. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, 
Whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year. Whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback. However you choose to be a fan, you make the game. And they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. Four-point DePaul lead at the start of quarter number three here at Sokol Arena in Omaha. You see the game story so far. We've talked a lot about Shantae Stonewall and her 20 first half points. Temi Sarda had a big hand in keeping Creighton in this game in the first half with 12, including six in a row there late in the second quarter to at least keep them within a couple buckets. Jalen Agnew, 10 points and five rebounds and four assists, filling up the stat sheet as usual. Well, what you don't see is there, she's also got four blocked shots in the first half. So, I mean, she's in the territory where you start talking, she could be on pace for a triple-double if things stay the way they're going. And Creighton may need every bit of that if they're to, to come out on top in this one because DePaul, boy, they are number 16 in the country and better believe it. Absolutely. Let's look at some other scores from around the Big East so far today. You see Seton Hall knocked off Georgetown 79-60. Marquette, that's a good bounce back win for them at Providence. They lost here at Sokol against Creighton on Friday. Pretty travel heavy week for them as they then flew out to the East Coast and won on the road today. They've exceeded some expectations early this year. St. John's a lead over Villanova early in the second half as well. And the team that's not playing up there, you see, and Xavier has really struggled through the early part of the season. Won their first game of the year against Utah, and then they've lost, I think it's 12 or 13 straight games now. And Musketeers looking for a way back to the win column. I don't think anybody quite expected them to be that far down this season. Be another fascinating Big East Conference season, just over a week or so into it. Here today, DePaul 2-0 in conference, Creighton 3-0. Both these teams had outstanding non-conference seasons leading into Big East play. In fact, Creighton had their best ever under Jim Flannery in his 18 years. Well, hey, DePaul's lost two games, Donnie. They lost to current number one UConn and current number three Oregon State. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> And again, they only lost to UConn by 10 on the road. Forced 21 turnovers out of the Huskies. So they are pretty, pretty good, you might say. But Creighton within four as we start the second half. Jay's in the white, DePaul in the blue. Right away, Timmy Sarda goes to work. A tested layup wouldn't go. Follow up wouldn't either from Rachel Saunders. Paul dominated in second chance points in the first half. Part of why they have the lead. 12 to 3, they outscored Creighton in that category. They had 10 offensive boards. And now their lead stays at four. Good rebound and contested circumstances by Rachel Saunders. You're not going to get anything easy against DePaul. Just like nothing is going to come easily. Just on the sideline there, she dove for that ball with Sonia Morris. Every pass, every shot, every rebound, every inch of the floor, DePaul's going to fight for it. I remember Morris hit the floor really hard and had to go out for a little while in the first half. And no hesitancy at throwing herself to the floor again. Olivia Elger. Hasn't really gotten going today. He's taken just one shot, hasn't scored. Now Sarda, end of shot clock, it's going to expire. And in general, as you said early on, John, the Jays don't mind going late in the shot no. clock. They want to keep this game as low scoring as possible, but that wasn't ideal. When Sarda's dribbling into three blue demons into, into traffic with two seconds on the shot clock, not ideal at all. Three ball missed by Kelly Campbell who started last year on the Naismith Trophy Player of the Year watch list. And she's been rather quiet here today so far. Agnew, yes, and Creighton within one. Uh, 13 points for Jalen Agnew. She gets things started here in the second half in the scoring column. And then Stonewall blocked by Gracie Griglione. And Griglione not contributing a ton in the scoring, not 
rebounding a bunch, but she is averaging almost a block a game on defense. Inbounded for a quick elbow pop from Lexi Held. Now that pressure and a five second violation. Turnover force to Paul Ball. And the inbound leads to a foul. And just like that, DePaul will have free throws with a chance to go up by five. And yeah, Creighton had just trimmed that lead to one, Donnie, and then all of a sudden, five second call, foul. Paul ready to stretch it out again. It's all part of that constant threat of avalanche that you oh. live under when you play against DePaul. Hang around and hang around, and then they can hang 10 or 15 points on you before you blink. It hasn't happened yet in this game, but led by as many as six briefly. Go up five again here if Church hits this free throw, which she does. More pressure from this inbound. Get it in this time to Sarda. She's going to put her head down and race to that front floor and goes all the way to the bucket and finishes. What body control by Tammy Sarda. Stonewall. Off the elbow and then commits the foul, trying to race Agnew for that rebound. Just the second against Stonewall. She's not in any real danger here in the second half. Jalen Agnew, five of 10 from the floor with 13 points. Dee Dee Pryor has gotten some minutes in the second quarter and early in the third. And the Jays back with in one. And Gracie Grigley-Own has five points today. Our season high is seven. She got that against Temple way back in the early part of the season. Coming up with some key buckets here in this one. Had the early three and now drops home the jumper from the free throw line. See, Held got a screen and used that to go to the hoop. Paul pushed the lead back to three. Held nearing her season average, too. She's got 11, averaging 13.3 on the year. Chloe Dwarak, Dee Dee Pryor, couldn't penetrate. Sarda, shot clock running down again. Pryor fumbled it, going to have to force something. And it's an air ball and a shot clock violation. What is that, the third shot clock violation in this game against Creighton? It's not something we see happen to the Jays very often. If you're familiar with the way Jim Flannery's teams play, but the denial of entry passes, the denial of every pass from DePaul, it's so much trouble on that end. Just a three-point game, though. And Campbell's entry pass to Stonewall almost didn't reach her. Morris kicking out. Open three. Off the back iron. Big opportunity for Kelly Campbell and the Demons there. Jays stay within a possession. Well, it was just a great recovery by Bachelor because they had gotten Stonewall switched onto Chloe Dworick, which is a massive mismatch. Agnew cutting inside, didn't get the bounce. Church driving on Agnew, who commits the foul. That's her second. And Church is really strong with the body, you see it right there. Just puts that shoulder down, creates space. Agnew backing away, trying to block the shot. Got her on the wrist. Bruno, another coach who's always fun to watch on that sideline. 
Four-point lead for DePaul as Church goes one of two on that trip. Agnew sized up the three, now takes it and nails it. Hell just wanted no part of it. She did not want to try and get into the air. And then against, a turnover. Against Jalen Agnew, and here come the Jays. Chance for Creighton to take the lead. Olivia Elger had to pull up. And the Jays don't mind this. Happy to hang in and milk some clock. Keep this a close game. And now Elger takes the three. Loose ball found by Batchelor, and Elger is fouled. And so Creighton now coming up with some second chance opportunities. And after this timeout, they'll shoot free throws with a chance to tie or take the lead. Elger has 16 for Creighton. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power gonna raise it up. We got the power gonna raise it up. We're on it up. We got to raise it up. A one-point game halfway through the third quarter at Sokol Arena. They're enjoying it, as yes, they should be. It's been a terrific game. We thought it would. You never know, though. Sometimes these games don't live up to their billing. This one has. And everybody get your popcorn ready for the rest uh -huh. of this second half. Or your soft pretzel. Yes. Or your walking taco, whatever you got. Whatever your snack of choice. Olivia Elger hasn't scored today. And still hasn't as she misses the first. Jalen Agnew it is, who has 16 points for Creighton. Hit a three a moment ago to bring them within one, and Elger now ties the game. Paul have led by as many as six. Creighton had a six-point lead early in the first quarter. Paul have led since fairly early in quarter two. They want the lead again, and great improvisation, but the finish wasn't there. And all kinds of chaos under the rim and leads to a foul on Elger. A push against Elger. I'd like to see it again. There was just so many bodies on the floor. And then 
didn't see a push, did you? Not on that first replay, and the quick inbound three splashed from the corner by Lexi Held. They lost her. She made him pay, and then the quick steal, but she traveled. But this is exactly the kind of chaos that DePaul thrive on. <laughs> and Jim Flannery was upset on the Creighton sideline, jumping up and down, yelling at his team, trying to get them aligned on that inbound play. Another timeout will take one as well. DePaul up three. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. The Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 conference tournament are now on sale starting at just $50. For tickets, visit BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. Creighton down three with the ball. Jalen Agnew leading them with 16 points. And Dwarak, shot clock again running down. Foul called on Lexi Held off the ball. That's a tough call. Uh, Held and Elger just got their feet kind of tangled up. But it's kind of the same thing that happened at the other end of the floor that got called against Elger. Bodies just get tangled up. Somebody has to be called for the foul. This time it's Lexi Held. Holly Batchelor looking for a teammate. Shot clock inside 10 again. Saunders. Trying to create, and does. She did more than create. That's a tough shot. I mean, got her body twisted and contorted, shooting across with the wrong hand. What a finish from the youngster. Kiara Dal Dalman turning and rolling one home. 6'2 junior from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Hung within a bucket or two most of the second half. Tied to Paul briefly. 
Elger. To the cutting Bachelor, who scores? It's a good, tough finish by the freshman. Made a nice cut to the basket and scored over Dolman. Shante Stonewall, she hasn't scored in the second half yet. After she had 20 in the first half. Uh, Jalen Agnew's been able to stay on her more often than she was in that second quarter when Stonewall really exploded. Chance for Creighton to take their first lead since early in the second quarter. Agnew wants it. Kicks out. Elger for three. Just off the mark. And then knocked loose by Batchelor, but claimed by Kelly Campbell. Yes, Campbell really boxed out hard against Rachel Saunders and put Saunders on the deck. Kind of created that run out opportunity. And led to that three from Deja Church. Creighton pushed that lead back to four. Big sequence there. Sarda right the other way. Cuts it back to two. Yeah, Sarda's so tough on the drive. Just feel where the pressure's coming from and avoid that block shot, even though she doesn't have a ton of height. Another three. Bounces into Bachelor's hands. Crowd screaming for a foul again on Dolman. This is just how DePaul play. They are going to body you up, guard tight, play physical, run all over the place. Elger wanted to hand that off to Agnew. Stonewall was right there. Wouldn't let her do it. Sarda. Still Sarda ties the game as she beats the shot clock. And Temi Sarda takes over the scoring lead for Creighton with 18. What a game from Temi Sarda. And Stonewall answers back for DePaul. Scoreless in the second half, no more. Shante Stonewall. This game has everything, Donnie Barnes. Sarda fouled. What a day she is having. As you said, with 18 points, she could get to 20 now if she makes both of these. And her season high was 25. That came early on against Crosstown Foe Omaha. First game of the regular season. There's 19 for Timmy Sarda. Seven of nine from the floor. Now five of five from the free throw line. She's done most of it getting to the rim. There's 20. A one point game once again. Dolman goes out for DePaul. Kelly Campbell bringing it up the floor. Final minute of the third quarter. And all the way under after driving the baseline. Sonia Morris nicely done. DePaul led by four at halftime. Creighton with the ball down three. Shot clock to seven. Sarda driving again. Forced to pull up this time and threw it away. And the shot clock expires. 4.2 left on the clock. And DePaul will look for the final shot of the frame. Looks like every time Creighton have a chance to make a big bucket, DePaul just come up with that tight defense. And don't give the Blue Jays anything. Some confusion on the inbound. Morris lost the handle and time expires. And Morris and Held both going for that inbound pass. Put DePaul out of sync. So it remains tight, extremely competitive. 60 to 57 DePaul back for the fourth after this.
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power gun. Big East Conference standings with Creighton and St. John's both out to 3-0 starts. DePaul have obviously, obviously played just two games and won them both so far. Seton Hall and Villanova also off to winning beginnings. Butler, Marquette, Georgetown, Xavier, Providence. You talked about Xavier, John. I don't think anybody expected them to be 1-13 and 0-3 and in conference. On a 13-game losing streak. That's not great. So still plenty of time to turn their season around, but here, Battle of two conference unbeatens and continues to live up to what we thought it might be. 60 to 57 to Paul. Those two, Shante Stonewall and Temi Sarda, have matched up beautifully today. Stonewall, 23 points. Sarda with 20. Jalen Agnew, don't forget about her. She has 16 for Creighton. DePaul basketball to start the fourth quarter. Held has 14 points for DePaul, and that's a kick. Ball out of bounds to the Blue Demons. Uh, anything you can do to keep them from getting it to Shante Stonewall with her back to the basket is a good thing to do. Held, Crowd calling for a travel, and it's out of bounds off Agnew. Paul have it with a shot clock at 12. Saw those overall records. Under the score bug there, 12 and 2 to Paul, 11 and 3 Creighton. And blowing past her defender and missing the layup was Lexi Held. Boy, she had the step, had more than a step. And Lexi Held's been really good all day long. Kind of an uncharacteristic miss for her. The big one too is it keeps Creighton within three. Elger. Spinning past Hill to try to draw the foul. And Elger dishing at Batchelor. And another good cut by Carly Batchelor to get to the rim as Elger had driven in. Five points for Batchelor in the second half. Church steps back from three. Can't hit. Fumbled by Sarda, though. Campbell double dribbled. Well, you don't see that called too often. Passed up the open three, elected to drive. She just paused with the ball in her hand for long enough to make that call. That's a big break for the Blue Jays. They've had a couple of them on these last two defensive stands. Missed layup and a turnover after a fumbled rebound. Chance to regain the lead for Creighton. Again, they have not led since early in the second quarter. Sarda in the lane. 
draws another foul. She's hit all six from the free throw line today. She'll shoot two more. Just the second personal against Lexi Held. Nobody from either team really in big foul trouble here in the fourth quarter. Now Deja Church has three for DePaul. That's about it. And we're tied at 60 as Sarda makes the first. 21 points now. And Creighton in front for the first time in the second half. And this Sokol Arena crowd responding. And DePaul has beaten Creighton 11 of their last 12 meetings. Foul called off the ball. I think that's on Elger. It is. Called for the hold. That'll be number three against Olivia. Jay's defending that corner inbound much better since they've been burned by a couple threes from there. Campbell wants Stonewall in the post. Jay's defending that really well. Stonewall has it now. Steps back on Elger. Didn't get the bounce. And Agnew fighting for the rebound and keeping command of it. Agnew hasn't shot the ball in a little while. Tony Sard has been doing most of that. Lost it there and tipped it to Agnew. That's a tough try from way out. Now DePaul looking for the lead back. In the lane, the pull-up two. Off the mark from Sonia Morris. This is an intense game, Donnie. Both of these teams are playing high amplitude basketball. Inside 10, Batchelor cuts and lays it in again. Found by Rachel Saunders. What a second half for Carly Batchelor. Timeout to Paul. They have been held scoreless over the first three minutes of this fourth quarter as Creighton have reeled off seven in a row. It's a season high seven points for the freshman Carly Batchelor. She finishes this one and the Jays are up three. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, 
However you choose to be a fan, you make the game. And they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. Here's your game reset with 6.58 to go in the fourth quarter. Creighton a three-point lead. Shante Stonewall, 23 points for DePaul, but just three of those in the second half so far. Temi Sarda, 22 for the Jays. See DePaul have two players with three fouls. Creighton have a trio with just two. No trouble, not a big issue to this point for either side. And DePaul yet to score here in the fourth quarter, Tommy. Don't go three minutes without scoring very often against anybody. Campbell. Lexi Hill. Still has 14 points today. Step back three. Hill ties the game. Oh, what a shot from Lexi Hill. Step back, high jump shot. And then a turnover, and Stonewall lays it in. And just like that, DePaul are back in the lead. And they trap Elger, who has to call a timeout. What a sequence. Out of that timeout for the Blue Demons. Yeah, that was a mistake by Olivia Elger right there. She picked up the ball instead of trying to dribble. When she had some space, she allowed the double team to come and got herself into trouble. That's what Jim Flannery is probably talking about over there right now. Is you just, you've got to have such good awareness against DePaul. And his team just made a mental error right there and caused him to, call, to turn the ball over first and then have to call a timeout right after. We were just talking during the break, John, weren't we, about the fact that Creighton had only turned it over four times in the second half. And that's part of why DePaul had more trouble scoring. They haven't been able to get out in transition very much. But you turn it over right under your own hoop to Shante Stonewall, that's not going to end well. Well, and to be honest, that's how, that's how Stonewall gets so many of her points is off those turnovers and when she's out and running. And she hasn't been out and running very much in the second half. Wow, foul. Called on Deja Church. That should be her fourth. She stays out there with four fouls. DePaul back off a bit. So a 5 0 burst by the Blue Demons. We came out of the break and said they hadn't scored in the fourth quarter yet. And they scored five points in about eight seconds. Now Agnew. She's been a little quiet since early in the third quarter. And couldn't get the bank, followed up and missed. But then Batchelor spins it in, and Carly Batchelor continues to provide huge buckets for the Jays in this second half. Nine points for her now. We're tied at 65. Batchelor having the best day of her freshman season. And then thrown off a leg and claimed by Saunders, who's fouled. They're going to get that against Shante Stonewall. It's going to be her third foul. Well, they almost had Sarda trapped in the corner. Now the Jays have numbers. Down low, Batchelor wants double figures. Can't quite do it. When you, have those, yeah, when you have those press break opportunities against the Blue Demons, you've got to take advantage. Tied with just over five remaining. Morris, Campbell, Held, takes that three, buries another. 20 points for Lexi Held. Three-point lead for DePaul again. Fourth triple for Lexi Held on the day. It's been big. Elger hasn't hit a field goal today. Has now. Back to one. It's not been Shante Stonewall here in the second half, Donnie. It's Lexi Held. It's been her show. Stonewall draws the double and throws it away. That skimming pass couldn't be reeled in by Kelly Campbell. Great and ball. It's the eighth time this season that Lexi Held has made three or more three-pointers. Yeah. 
Jays break that pressure. Elger backs it out. They told Creighton before the game they'd be down one with four minutes left. They'd have taken that in a heartbeat. I think so. Agnew. Just has been a little off since early in the third quarter and a little overeager from Carly Baxter at that time as she fouls Lexi Hill. It's the second team foul on Creighton in this fourth quarter. DePaul have committed three. And it was just a collision. Kind of backside to backside with Lexi Held and Carly Batchelor. And Lexi Held was the worst for it. Held slips to, show, to Stonewall. Missed the jumper, gets her own rebound, and missed the lay in. Loose ball, big scramble. It's tied up. The arrow's in Creighton's favor. Creighton ball. Now you're not going to get Shante Stonewall to miss that putback opportunity too often. They've been so good on second chance points here today, Donnie. They were leading in that category 17 to 4 at the last break. Yeah, if DePaul win this game, that's going to be why. Those second chance points. You're right. Missed chance for Stonewall there. Uh, the Jays trapped in the corner for a moment. Creighton break out, looking for the lead. Oh, and Batchelor fumbles it out of bounds. And one of the first times today she's looked like a freshman. Just a little sped up. Just tried to get that ball going up toward the hoop before she had fully secured it. It's another turnover for the Blue Jays. Number 14 on the day. Blue Demon so experienced. So good at surviving challenges on the road. Up one with inside three remaining, and Deja Church misses short, and Batchelor recovers to pull in the rebound. Now Agnew, she hasn't gone to the rim much in this second half. Knocked out of her hands there, no foul. Creighton ball with 16 to shoot. This has been a rough and tumble game. Both of these teams are going to need the ice bath after this one. I mean, bodies on the floor, hard collisions. This is Big East women's basketball. Agnew hasn't scored since pretty early in the third quarter. Has 16 points today. And that was deflected out by a DePaul hand. Four to shoot. <laughs> Trying to get Agnew going. Creighton running some isolation for her. Just spacing the floor and trying to get her going toward the basket. But the tight defense is not allowing it. Elger backing up to inbound to Sarda. Sarda's blocked by Deja Church. Well, that's a dangerous proposition from Church. And then a block by Elger as she denies Lexi Hill who is trying to take that transition three. Back to Deja Church. She's got four fouls, Donnie. She's jumping up to block a shot. Things don't go her way. She's out of the contest, but able to get it. And then a great block at the other end by Olivia Elger. Stonewall takes the jumper in and out. And Creighton again have a chance to retake the lead. And the Neither team, team has scored in two and a half minutes. That's off Church. Creighton ball inside two minutes remaining. Creighton a two minute 26 second scoring drought. DePaul two minutes and 47 seconds. Elger dangerous inbound and Church steals it. Deja Church pulls up. Couldn't hit the bank. Got her own rebound. And then held in stride. Hits a big three. That was a high arcing shot from Lexi Held. No way she was going to get that one blocked. Again, second chance points. Huge for DePaul. Creighton need a bucket now. Can Agnew provide one? 
She goes to the rim. Got the rebound. Spun it out. There was a foul. Free throws coming. Just hasn't fallen here in the second half for Jalen Agnew. She was making bucket after bucket in the first 20 minutes. These just are not going down in the second half. This is good for Creighton. Score with the clock stopped. Agnew needs both here. That was their first point in over three minutes. But Agnew makes it a two-point game. Got to watch Lexi Held coming off that ball screen high, getting open for three. Backdoor cut by Held this time. Can't score from in tight. Batchelor tips the rebound to herself and hangs on. Saunders to the oh, front court. That will give a coach a heart attack when your center <laughs> is dribbling it out against the press. Creighton down two with the ball. Final minute of regulation. Sarda. And was cut off. They've handled her drives a lot better in this fourth quarter. Drives again, Sarda. Steps back. Almost bounced it in. She will shoot two. And that's now the fifth foul against DePaul as well. And so they're over the limit. Just 35.6 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Temi Sarda, who's been perfect from the free throw line today. She stays that way. Nine for nine. Creighton need another from her to tie this game. She does. Timeout to Paul. <laughs> what a game. 71 each with 35.6 to go. Well, it's about six points over Creighton's season scoring average. And it's about 16 points below DePaul's season scoring average. So you can say that it's closer to the way Creighton has wanted to play the game. But my goodness, the clutch shots that DePaul has made in this game, Donnie, would you doubt them at all making a key shot here down the stretch? No, not at all. Let's look at DePaul's upcoming schedule. After they conclude this epic battle here today, they'll be at Seton Hall. Well, they'll be at home against Seton Hall, excuse me, on Friday. It'll be on BEDN, then St. John's on the 12th. At Xavier, at Butler. All those, of course, central time listings. But DePaul, talk about how clutch they've been in this second half, John. We're wondering how they would be in a situation like this because they haven't played in that many close games this year. They blow so many teams away. You look up and down their game by game results this year. One by 18, one by 24, and they won by 45 over Arkansas State. And they beat Milwaukee by 29. The one close game they had was at Northwestern, <laughs> where, you know, no big deal. They beat a Big Ten team 70 to 68. But other than that, there haven't been many of these sequences this year where they've had to come down the stretch late in the fourth quarter in a tie situation. And the one thing we haven't talked much about today, Donnie, is the importance of this game in Big East standing. The way it's trending, these two are going to be right there at the end for that regular season title. We could be looking back at this game in Soquel Arena and saying that was the moment it turned. And we could be looking back at this moment right now. 30 to go in the fourth, tied at 71. Lexi Held with the ball. Now Kelly Campbell. About a four second difference. And DePaul didn't like what they were seeing there. And Bruno says, let's talk it over some more. 20 seconds left. It's exactly a five second difference between game and shot clock. So 20 on the game clock, 15 on the shot clock. Feasibly, DePaul could run this down to about seven seconds on the game clock and take a shot and take the lead. You see Creighton's upcoming schedule. They have Providence next Saturday and at Seton Hall at St. John's and then Xavier at home. But everybody focused on right now. 
in these next 20 seconds to maybe determine a winner today. Number 13 RPI Creighton against number nine RPI DePaul. It was always gonna be like this. It's everything we hoped. How's it gonna end? Campbell held. Little screen from Stonewall. Now slips it to Stonewall. Stonewall draws the foul and she'll shoot free throws with 6.4 seconds left. She's so tough on the inside. Shante Stonewall gets matched up on Rachel Saunders. She was mad at herself for missing the layup, even though she got hit. As you said earlier, John, a 77% free throw shooter on the year. Stonewall misses the front end. Now, she makes the second. It would give Creighton six seconds to get down the floor make a shot and win the game. For the lead, Stonewall puts them in front. Timeout Creighton. But here we go. It's the DePaul press that has caused so many problems for every team they've played this season. Especially Creighton here today who are five turnovers above their season average in today's contest. It's gonna take one more defensive stand for DePaul to come out with a one point victory. And that press is something DePaul are generally willing to live and die by. Absolutely. So you wouldn't think they'd go away from it now. There's no way they're gonna let Creighton dribble up the floor with six seconds to go. With all the shooters that Creighton can put on the floor, Doug Bruno is not going to just give them an easy walk to the timeline. He would love nothing more than to force another five second call if he can. I believe Creighton had the option to, ad do they have the option to advance the ball here? We'll find out in a moment. I think Creighton have taken another timeout. They've extended this to a full. So Jim Flannery wants some more time to diagram a play. And the question is, who does the ball go to for Creighton? Who's taking the shot? Demi Sardo's been great driving to the basket. Jalen Agnew hasn't had a great second half shooting the ball. Be interesting to see what's drawn up. Yeah, Temi Sarda has 24 for Creighton. Agnew has 18, but just two points for Jalen Agnew since early in the third quarter. Shante Stonewall, 26 for the Blue Demons. Again, just six in the second half, but that last point is what has them in front. Lexi Hild has poured in 23 as well for DePaul. I would think as, as well as Temi Sarda has taken the ball to the rim today, probably draw something up for her. Getting to the basket, you only need a two, there's no reason to take an outside shot. You see Creighton haven't hit a field goal in four and a half minutes. They do advance the ball out of that timeout, so they don't have to worry about the backcourt pressure. They still have to worry about a five-second call, however. Yep. Elger to inbound. Does so to Sarda. Temi Sarda. Stripped of the ball. Stolen and fouled. Kelly Campbell with 1.9 left. And you see Temi Sarda put her hands to her temples. She knew. Just got a little bit ahead of herself. She tries to spin back inside. Doesn't have the feet quite sorted out. And Campbell there to rip it away. And that's probably the icing on the cake here for DePaul. Campbell sinks the first. Jim Flannery trying to quickly diagram an inbound play here. Second free throw is good. Creighton need a three. Can they attempt one? Sarda at the buzzer. Off target, and DePaul survive. And the Blue Demons go to 3-0 in Big East play. Great effort by Creighton. But that late steal by Kelly Campbell helps the Blue Demons preserve the win. Final score today, DePaul 74, Creighton 71. Back to talk about it after this.
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back at Sokol after a great game this afternoon as DePaul hold off Creighton 74-71 to go to 3-0 in Big East play. Back here courtside one more time. I'm Donnie Barnes along with John Schreiner, joined by DePaul head coach Doug Bruno. And coach, I know you've been doing this for 34 years. Does the heart rate still get pretty intense there late in a game like that? 34 at DePaul, 46 total. <laughs> It's always the players. This is a players game. I've been blessed to coach at a great school like DePaul, but Shante Stonewall gave us a tremendous first half and was strong in the second half, but 20 points in the first, and Alexi made some big shots down the stretch. Jim Flannery does a great, great job here at Creighton. This is a very talented Creighton team, and it's a great Big East. I, I, this year's Big East is just a monster. I know Creighton were able to make it tough for you defensively for long stretches in that second half. How, how were you able to find enough points late in that fourth quarter for the win? We have a lot of different players that can score the ball. And at the same time, you know, our pressure is designed to try to wear them out. I mean, they did a great job of getting their ball, you know, to, to Carta and, and Agnew and, and those two great scorers. But I thought our pressure over time wore them out. And then Lexi hit some big shots. You know, they, 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 we are a quick scoring team, but we're capable of being a patient team and we're still a little bit new to being made to be patient. And when we have to be patient, we got to be better. And I thought that happened. But Lexi made some big time basketball plays. Coach, uh, obviously in a game that's decided by three points, the margins are razor thin. But for you, what was the difference today for your team? Players making plays. I, I mean, I, 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 totally. I mean, I mean, that's the players win these games. And, and it, it, it's just a compilation of little things. Basketball is a sport where you go up 100 times down the floor, one way, 100 the other way, and it comes down. Even a 20-point, look, what looks like a blowout is only 10 trips. So a game like this really could have gone in either way. I thought we made a couple clutch stops there at the end. And, you know, I, it was a, a good lesson for us as to execution, offensive execution, when you're not able to get quick, easy first quick shots you have to be able to execute your offense and get and, and display some patience and I thought we did that a little bit better in the second half we still got a lot better a lot of getting better to do last thing coach after a big win like this anything special or fun your team likes to do to celebrate well we start school tomorrow we're on the mm. quarter system so we're one of the only schools in the Big East it's going to be in school tomorrow so thank Jeannie Lenti Ponsato and DePaul for chartering us home tonight we'll be back in Chicago by 6 6 30 and then our players are off tomorrow, and, and we get ready for a big home stand this week. We got Seton Hall coming in on Friday night, and then we got St. John's. Both of Seton Hall and St. John's are really strong ball clubs, playing well, coming in on the 10th and 12th. And you know, because Marquette 
and DePaul played the first game and it's our bye week and the last game of the year is our bye week. We got eight straight weeks of Friday, Sunday and, and we're embracing that. But what do we do is just get a good day off tomorrow and get to school. Congrats on the win, Coach. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. Head Thanks, coach everybody. Doug Bruno, the DePaul Blue Demons, now three and in conference play, thirteen and two overall after this seventy four seventy one victory at Sokol Arena. Well, John, again, a great effort from Creighton's standpoint. They hung in and did a lot of the things that they wanted to do today. They've had a lot of trouble against DePaul in recent years, as has pretty much everybody in the Certainly. country outside the top five or ten teams. So they wanted to keep this close and give themselves a chance late. They did that, just couldn't execute quite enough down the stretch, didn't make a field goal over the final five minutes. Well, and that, that's really the key. They, they didn't put the ball in the basket at the end of the game, and DePaul did. You know, they put the... Got the shots when they needed them, namely Lexi held in that fourth quarter. So big, hitting two or three, I think, three-pointers late in the game to, to really stretch it out for DePaul, keep them, you know, ahead uh, when, when Creighton was making a, a bit of a push. So, yeah, it, this is just a really tough DePaul team. I think they exhibited that toughness here today and come out with a big victory, and they moved to 3-0 and in Big East play. It was a fun one. We hope you enjoyed it as well. That's going to do it for our coverage today from Omaha. I want to thank Brad Pace, our executive producer today, Joe Willman as well, everyone here in Omaha at Sokol Arena. For John Schreiner, I'm Donnie Barnes. DePaul 74, Creighton 71. Thanks for watching Big East Women's Basketball presented by SoFi here on the Big East Digital Network.